Okay, girls, we all know how important self-care is, but I always say the first and most important step to taking care of yourself is investing in yourself. We all want to show up as the highest version of ourselves, but we don't always have the proper tools and guidance to do so. That's why I offer one-on-one confidence coaching. In as little as 8 or 12 weeks, I help women go from settling to believing they can have it all. My mentorship is for women who want to raise the bar. So I provide the tools to strengthen your mindset, improve your self-awareness and self-esteem, and live consciously. I've helped all of my clients trust in themselves, embody confidence through every challenge, and genuinely believe the life of their dreams is possible so they start acting like it. If you're ready to commit to life-changing growth and start showing up as the 2.0 version of you, then my coaching program is for you. So inquire by filling out the form in the show notes, and if your submission is approved, I will reach out to offer an intro call to discuss the program in detail, the pricing, and see how I can best serve you. From then, you can expect weekly 60-minute private Zoom calls, affirmations and homework for your needs and goals, weekly or bi-weekly accountability check-ins, unlimited messenger support from me during office hours, and more. My clients' testimonials share that they've seen improvement in themselves from as early as their first session. All you need is to be willing and able to invest in yourself spiritually, financially, and mentally to become that best version of you. So again, check out the show notes for the link or even the link in my social media bios to inquire about one-on-one coaching with me. Now let's get into the episode. Settling is not an option for Everything me. I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And today's episode is the amazing story of my friend, Chelsea Coleman. Chelsea was one of the first names I had ever written down on my For the Girls document with my list of ideal guests that I would love to have on the show because she is and has always been super inspiring to me. But recently, she posted a photo on Instagram with a caption talking about her top five tips to rewrite your story and create a life you are obsessed with. I personally have known Chelsea for five years now and Chelsea went from being divorced, addicted to Adderall, moving back in with her parents, broken down, completely depleted of self-love and self-worth to becoming a millionaire, a business owner and mentor, a wife to her dream man in only seven months of meeting, now a mother, And she's full of self-esteem. So I thought there was no better time than now. I had Chelsea come on to tell us her love story with her husband, David, and really tell the girls how when a man knows what he wants, he goes for it and he gets it. And also her own personal story of how she overcame a really dark place by doing tons of personal development, hiring coaches, and doing all the work to help her on her growth journey. So this isn't just a story of love, perseverance, or even resilience. This is a story of faith. She gave me the chills listening to her. It's really crazy to see how powerful it really is when you put your faith in everything. And it's 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 a ride and it's a good one. So sit back and relax because I hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. But before we get into it, Chelsea talks so highly about how her personal development coaches helped her along the way in all of this. So this is just a friendly reminder that there's only two weeks left of my discounted one-on-one coaching programs. As you know, I have coached countless women in situations just like Chelsea's and I help them go from settling to believing they can have it all. I give my clients the tools to boost their self-esteem, embody confidence, and completely trust in themselves. I help women show up as the highest version of themselves in as little as 8 or 12 weeks of private coaching. This is the most 
My programs have ever been discounted and ever will be discounted. So take advantage, inquire through the link in the show notes, and be sure to enroll by May 31st to get the promo. Okay, everyone, please welcome Chelsea Coleman. I am so excited for this episode. Chelsea, thank you for being here. Introduce yourself to the girls. Hi, everyone. My name is Chelsea. Thank you guys so much for having me and for Vic for having me on the podcast today. You guys can find me on Instagram, LFG Babe. Um, I've been partnered with this affiliate marketing company for the last five years. Um, and I teach women all over the world how to generate an additional income stream online through this business model. Wow, that's amazing. First of all, you've actually, I kind of forgot that you're still LFG babe on Instagram. You have, that's been your, like, what is that? That's been your brand, like, since I've known you. No, it it really has. So when I started the business back in 2018, you know, I was just like Chelsea Newman on Instagram and which is my maiden name. I went to Bali on this retreat in 2019 with one of my mentors who's, just really helped me along my journey. She's been a huge role model for me over the years, manifestation, babe. And we're at this table, like we're, you know, we're all outside eating breakfast or lunch, whatever we were doing. And I was just like, I don't know, like I knew part of being like a business owner was really like creating that brand. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to showcase women empowerment, community, like all that stuff. And like, cause that's, that's who I am. And that's really wanted, I wanted to represent And we're all talking and they're all like, LFG, LFG, babe. Like, let's freaking go, babe. I'm like, yes. So, so that's really been my thing. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm like, wait, was that like a store? Like, was that like a brand that you had? No, it's like your personal thing. It's my personal thing. Yeah. And for a little while I dabbled in coaching and I like was thinking like that was kind of like something I wanted to do. But then I realized I'm like, no, like, if anyone wants to get coached by me, they're just going to have to join the teams. Speaking of, you mentioned your maiden name. So Chelsea, you were originally Chelsea Newman. You know, something I was thinking the other day when I was like putting the questions together. And of course you're Chelsea Coleman now. Do you yeah. ever think about the fact that like your, ma- like your last name, like kind of. I know it's so similar. I know David and I talked about that a lot. He's like, you've only had to change like a few, a few letters. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Like- Newman, Newman, Coleman, like you're on the same vibe. And I find that to be really interesting. It's not interesting. And another fun fact is David was born like this is so crazy, like so crazy. He was born April 4th, 1990. And I was born April 5th, 1990. We are literally less than 24 hours apart. Like how insane is that? Like our moms were literally in labor or giving birth or whatever, like around the same time. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that is wild. That is wild. Because something I think about all the time, like, uh, of course, my last name is Alario, which is Italian. And so I've always said, I, you know, I've lived in Tampa, I've lived in Miami, I've dated all different guys. I've lived in New York, yeah. like, I've dated between Spanish guys to Irish guys, like all different types of guys. And I literally am like, see, we are not meant to be together because I cannot have this last name. And like, I'm a traditional girl. So I I want to change my last name when I get married. Yeah. I would put their last name with my name. And if it's not oh like an Italian yeah. name, I'm like, it just doesn't work for me. And that's yeah. always a very big thing. I'm like, I just have to marry an Italian guy. No, I literally broke up with someone because of that. <laughs> <laughs> like before, obviously pre-David, but no, I feel you. I'm definitely... I've definitely gone through that too. It's a huge thing. Like when you're changing your name, it's like you want to, it's your new identity. Yeah. And then you met David and you're like, okay, this works. <laughs> I'm like, this is my person. I love the name CC. Yeah. Chanel. Yeah. I'm like, okay, lots of Chanel in my future. Yes. Okay. Love that. Love that. All right. So I want to give the girls a little taste of the powerful woman that you are before we dive into like everything. Cause there, well, first of all, what I will say, you were one of the very first names that I wrote down. I sent you a picture of it recently. Yeah. So I have my For the Girls Google Doc, which I made before the For the Girls even came out, and I still use it to this day. So we're going like two years with this doc of me, like just putting all my ideas, everything that 
all my research, everything. And so you were one of the first names I put on that list. I don't even really update that list anymore. Like when I have a guest, I just write the notes, but you were on that list from before I even created for the girls. And I've always known you have this like powerful story and whatnot. But when you, why we're here, which we'll get into at the end, when I saw that caption that you had made about changing your life around, whatever, I'm like, this is it. So I went and I had to like send you the picture. I have yeah. wanted you on here since before I even launched it. I've always known you to be powerful. So this is not a new thing that you're on here. Like this is, I've wanted you on here from the beginning. So oh, it's just yeah. a matter of timing that I have you on here. So sweet. I really appreciate that. I'm honored. Uh, so I've known you for five years now, originally yeah. knowing you as a single woman. And I remember we used to like FaceTime a little bit. And we were like, yeah. oh, guys, and we would text yeah. a little bit. And yeah. I remember your journey and your story in general, like you had previously gone through a divorce at a young age, might I add. And yeah. we'll talk about that in more detail when you share your story. But about three years ago, pre, well, let's say um, PD, pre David. <laughs> PD, pre David. <laughs> I, I love that so much. <laughs> I saw you. As like a single woman to then in a matter of three months, you got engaged and then you quickly got married and all that because you were working with Crystal, who I previously had as a guest on for the girls as well. And I've also ended up working with because of you. I saw Crystal. I found Crystal through you. Uh, So it's such a it's always like a full circle thing. So tell us what that was like. What made you start working with Crystal or how you found Crystal? What was that coaching like? And then how did all of that turn into like you literally going from this single to engage and married in literally a matter of three months situation? So, so going backwards. So when I started my Monet business back in 2018, I had just gotten out of a five-year relationship. I was living with the guy, like all the things. And long story short, I broke up with him right when I started my Monet business. To me... Like Monet was going to be my boyfriend, like until I hit the top rank in the company. That was kind of like my mentality. Of course, like I was talking to guys. I was like dating guys, but like no one seriously like that I would marry. I was just kind of like having fun. Like Monet was my commitment. In late 2019, so about two years into my business at that point, I came to the realization that my business was moving forward. Like things were going good. And I was like, you know what? Like I feel open to calling in my person, but I knew I had a ton of work to do. And that is like the other thing that I really will attest so much to Monet is that it made me really dive into personal development and become a better version of myself. So it opened up like this huge door for me, which I'm forever grateful for. So I have no shame and I'm all about investing in people, coaches, courses, anything that I know I need to help me. So I was very aware that I had a lot of toxic patterns in my romantic life, like even going back to like my first marriage that ended in divorce. And then in my prior relationship that I just ended before I started Monet, like I had like a lot of toxic patterns in my love life. And like, I was attracting like a certain kind of a guy and was letting things happen to me. And I just was like, I'm not going to be available for that anymore. And like, I know I have like inner wounds and, and things that I need to heal. If I really want to call in like my person, like my dream guy. And be ready for him. One of my girlfriends, we were just like talking. We were like talking about like dating and like whatever. And she told me about Crystal. Okay. So I listened to her podcast and I was like, oh my God, like this girl is amazing. Like I want to work with her. I found her on Instagram, hired her, all the things. We started working one-on-one. And through working with Crystal, I had like a lot of inner work to do when it came to my love life and and healing like my toxic patterns and all the things. And something that she did, which was so cool, I tell this to everyone, like if they want to call in their person, like you need to at least do this. She has this course called Build a Man Boot Camp. And I took it so seriously. And I wrote down like all of the things. And it's not like lists where you're like, okay, they have to have six pack abs. They need to like whatever. It's not like that. It's more of like, how do you want like the relationship to feel? How do you want to treat each other? That kind of stuff, right? 
Whereas in the past, like I had very, like I always dated like really, you know, handsome guys, but like they treated me like shit, you know? And I had like a lot of emotional abuse in my past relationships. So I'm like, obviously don't want that. I want them to make me feel like a queen. I want them to feel like a king. Like I want us to be like aligned. I want us to be into our faith with God together, like all the things, right? Like writing this list. And after every date that I would go on, once I was kind of like on this journey, I would look at my list at the end of the date, regardless if it was crap or whatever, and really feel into like the relationship that I was calling in. And like, that's a huge part of really like what's shifted my life over these past few years is just really feeling into what you're calling in and having the faith and the vision to make it happen. So I'm doing that list, whatever, working with Crystal, feeling so much better. Oh, it also like she has this thing where she's like, you want to date like a duchess. So, and I, that just helped my perspective so much because I think before I didn't have a lot, a lot of self-worth when it came to relationships and I would allow myself to be treated the way that I was treated. Mm -hmm. So I just gave myself permission to have higher standards. And when you have higher standards, you're just as a result going to attract a higher quality man. For anyone who's listening, Crystal is amazing. Work with her, listen to her podcast. I love her so much. She's awesome. In 2020, as the world was, you know, falling apart, um, my life was coming together. Like it's absolutely crazy. So I hit the top rank in the company, turned 30 and I was like, okay, what's next? I was living in Orlando still and Obviously hadn't met my person and I'd always wanted to live on the West coast and I was in between Santa Monica and Scottsdale and I chose Scottsdale because it felt more like intimate. It felt kind of like a mini Miami and like a mini LA and it didn't seem as intimidating to me and I knew some people there. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to Scottsdale. So I go out to Scottsdale, have the cutest apartment, get an interior designer. I made it like my pink palace. It was so cute and feminine. I loved it. Going on some dates, whatever. And David and I, like long story short, he had found me through one of my friends, Jackie. He saw me like on her Instagram or whatever, because they'd all gone to college together in Tampa. And he like, yeah. So that's like kind of when he found out about me and Jack and Jess had told me like, that David was interested in me, but I wasn't available for any of that yet. I'm like, I'm good. So when I turned 30, he like, obviously he had turned 32 and he like messaged me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw this guy a bone. He never asked me on a date. I'm like, I'm moving to Scottsdale. So I move out to Scottsdale, not paying him any attention. When I was in Scottsdale, like, obviously I like was shouting out like my apartment complex and like, I was like tagging it, whatever. Probably it's not the safest thing to do, but that's what I was doing. <laughs> he saw like I was living at Vitri Apartments in Scottsdale. So he reached out to the concierge department. It's just so sweet, like what he did. <laughs> and it blew me away. He reached out to the concierge department and told them he wanted to send flowers to his friend, Chelsea, who had just moved into the building because he didn't have my number. He obviously didn't know my address, like whatever. And I get to my apartment like that, that day or whatever. Didn't know any of this was happening. I see this box of roses at my front door. And I'm like, who sent me roses? Like thinking it was like my mom or like my dad or like some one of my friends or whatever. And I open up this box and there is this beautiful letter, like this beautiful handwritten letter, dozen roses. And it's like the kind that don't die. Like they last like a yeah. long time. And I still have them and they're still thriving, which is so cool. But he wrote this letter to the point, intentional, like no bullshit, basically just like that he wanted to meet me. And he felt like he had, he really regretted never asking me on a date when I was still in Florida. Like he wanted to meet me, like whatever. That was like a huge thing for me that I wanted is I wanted someone to chase me. Yeah. I wanted someone to pursue me. And I felt so like wanted. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, this guy's really like going out on a limb here. I'm like, yeah. it was ballsy. I loved it. It wasn't like it was some random guy on Instagram. Like Jack and Jess had been talking to me about him since 2018. So I knew he wasn't a weirdo. So yeah. So he wrote his number on there and he was like, I forget what he said, but basically I reached out to him and I'm like, got your flowers and your letter. Like, wow. Like that was so amazing. Like, I want to talk to you. Like, I want to like see what this is all about. So we set up a FaceTime and we FaceTime for literally four hours 
which was so nice for anyone who's listening who's single like I think FaceTime dates for your first date is such a vibe because there is no pressure whatsoever for anything. And all you get to do is get to know each other. If you think there's a connection, then you can meet them. I don't know. I just, I loved that for us because David and I could just talk, get to know each other. And I was just like, so blown away by him. And I'm like, you need to come out to Scottsdale. Like you need to, we need to see if there's like something here. So he like came out like the next weekend or whatever to Scottsdale and I got him a hotel. (laughs) So I'm like, I don't want him staying at my house. You know, I don't want to like set that expectation. The moment I met him, I walked into the, it's called Toca Madera in Scottsdale. And I've been there in New York. It's such a cool place. Yeah, I walked into the restaurant. I know this sounds so cheesy, but I think it was just like all these years like leading up. I saw David and I was like, because my my one thing that I was so curious about, I'm like, okay, this guy seems awesome, but is he attractive in person? Is there something wrong with him? And I saw him. I'm like, oh my God, he is so handsome. And I was just like, this is my guy. We had the most amazing night by like the second or third day or whatever. We said, I love you. Two weeks later, he moved up. Yeah. Two weeks later, he moved out to Scottsdale to live with me, moved in together. And then three months later, we were engaged and then we were married in January. So we met in June, married January 9th, 2021. (laughs) And he gave me my dream, my dream ring that was on my Pinterest board. So Wait, okay, so let's get this straight. Before you ever met or before you ever even exchanged phone numbers, he sent you flowers. Yeah. Again, before you met, you he called you and spent four hours on a FaceTime with you. Then yeah. your first meet was him flying out, taking you to dinner. Three days later, 48 hours later, let's say he told you that he loved you. Two yeah. weeks after that, he picked up his life and moved to live with you. Yeah. Three months later, he proposed to you and a short few months after that you were married yeah (laughs) I know it's crazy but you don't believe that that's your life when you say that because you went through the ringer with guys so are you like what the fuck but honestly like I truly believe like I'm a Christian and I it is such like a god thing to kind of give you guys even more context like it's just so cool how this all came together so Before Dave had had even sent me flowers or done any of this, and I I was in Scottsdale, whatever, my mom called me. And my grandma's like, she's a super strong Christian, and like, she's always like praying for us and like all things. And um, my mom called me and she's like, Charles, I just want to let you know that Nana just like, she just had like a prayer call with this woman about you meeting your husband. And she's like, and we all felt the Holy Spirit like so much. And I wouldn't be surprised if you met your husband like really, really soon. And I was like, oh, okay, awesome. Cause like, I'm here for that. And then David, like, it was just, it was such like a God thing, you know, like it was so orchestrated from him and how it all came together. Like it was so beautiful. You can't make this up. The cool thing that I I still can't get over to this day. I had never told David this until obviously he proposed to me there, but I never told him this leading up to this. There was this place uh, in California. It's called Ritz. It's the Ritz Carlton at Half Moon Bay. Had been somewhere I'd always wanted to go to. Like I'd seen it in magazines and social media and stuff. Like since I was probably like a teenager, I thought it was like such a cool property. And I always had wanted to visit there and stay there. And it seemed so like exclusive and beautiful. It's where he proposed to me. (laughs) Yeah. Wait, you never told him that that never was told him. Work. Never told him. No, it's where he proposed to me. The Ritz Carlton at Half Moon Bay in California. Oh my God. Wait. And then you also mentioned that he got you the ring that was on your vision board. So did yeah. you tell him that? Was I, did, I did. I did. I showed him a picture. Yeah. Because I, you almost just really gave me a stroke that he like proposed where you wanted to be proposed to, that he gave you the ring without knowing. Like, no. okay, so you did show him the ring, but he still, he, he, literally came correct gave you every final detail you wanted I know and what's even like he's such a romantic like David is totally a romantic which is one of the things that I love because that was something I never had had in my relationships and I really wanted that is to be you know cherished and taken care of like in like that way 
So he, he, like how he planned, how he did the proposal was so like lavish and so sweet. He did a five day, we did a five day trip throughout California. He surprised me. The whole thing was a surprise. I had just done my first leadership retreat in Los Cabos for some of my girls. I came back and he's like, we're going on a trip. I'm taking you somewhere. I'm like, okay. And he's like, all you can pack is like this little suitcase. I'm like, what? We're going for five days. All I can pack is this little suitcase. And it's because he had rented this Ferrari and Ferrari has like no trunk storage at all. So that's why, because David's a car guy. So I'm like, okay. So we did like a five day road trip up California. And then on the third day, he proposed to me at Half Moon Bay, but it was so sweet. I would die. So recently I told you girls about budgeting my food expenses and trying out every plate. And I got a bunch of meals in from them last week to try and I cannot believe how much bang you get for your bite. So I have been really conscious of my spending habits lately and if you want to save money with me, you need to try every plate. America's best value meal kit. So I got their linguine with tomato and kale, broccoli and pepper stir fry, and blackened shrimp salad and it was So convenient that I will take that over grocery shopping any day. And it's actually 25% cheaper than going grocery shopping with no hidden fees so you can count on great value week after week. And you only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. So you can customize every plate meals to your liking with options to swap proteins and sides or add a protein to a veggie dish each week, however you want to do it. So join me in choosing every plate over takeout to save money while still enjoying quick, satisfying meals. I always thought that meal kits were expensive, but after my experience with every plate and seeing otherwise, I'm sold. You can get delicious meals at a low price. And with my code, you can get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and enter code for the girls 149. Again, that's just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and enter code for the girls 149. Girls, if you want to make laundry day easier, you need to listen up. I just started using True Earth Laundry Detergent Eco Strips and I'm amazed. Yes, strips. No more plastic jugs of pods or liquid. It's perfect how lightweight and small they are because I live in an apartment without a laundry room. So the more minimal the space needed, the better. So they're easy to use, super compact, and they're biodegradable. So they help reduce the billions of plastic household containers that can end up in our landfills and oceans every year. I have been using the fresh linen strips and my clothes, oh my gosh, they smell amazing and they're so fresh clean and soft and of course they have fragrance free strips as well for those of you who prefer that option it's super important to me that my products are dermatologist approved and these are certified by dermatologists as they are hypoallergenic and they're also vegan cruelty free paraben free and free of added dyes try true earth's laundry detergent eco strips today at true.earth forward slash for the girls and use code for the girls at checkout to get 12% off. That's T R U dot E A R T H and use promo code for the girls to get 12% off at checkout today. Start cleaning your laundry the smarter way with true earth. Shopping these days can be underwhelming, but at QVC, we believe those who love to shop deserve a living, breathing way to shop, where product descriptions are alive with demos by creators, chats with inventors, and hosts who know the most. From self-care and kitchenware to fashion trends and forever faves, at QVC, we bring life to products and products to life. Shop qvc.com slash podcast and use code QVC15podcast for $15 off $30 for new customers. This is shopping brought to life. It was so romantic. And I had no, like, literally, I had no idea. Like, my girlfriends were like, Chelsea, he's going to propose to you. I'm like, no, he's not. Because he kept telling me, 
because I knew he had ordered this ring. Like there was no, like, it's not oh, like so I you didn't... knew that you were getting engaged or I knew like David and I, yeah, I knew that. Like there was no, I knew he had ordered this ring, but he kept telling me the, cause it was a custom order that it was 10 weeks out. So I kept thinking, oh, like we're not going to get, you know, engaged till like later. So we get to have him in Bay. I'm like, oh my God maybe I am getting engaged. And like, he <laughs> started acting weird. And we get to the hotel room and he orders like champagne to the room. I'm like, what is going on? And then David said like, like his stomach was upset and he was, it, it wasn't upset. He was like typing up like the rest of the, or writing up the last of like my proposal letter that he was going to give me. And he was just acting weird. I'm like, why is happening? And then once we got down to the beach, he, I'm like, okay, something's happening. And he proposed to me on the beach. So um. I was like, that was an amazing story and now we are going to bring some darkness into it (laughs) i want him back all the way up on a wonderful note yes let's get back to pd pre-david so prior to david and becoming a mom it was like because people might hear this journey you got engaged and you got married and you had a baby and all the things in a blink of an eye. But before that, like we said, you've gone through the ringer, you went through a lot. So like I said, I've known you for five years and from hearing your story and knowing your story, I know that you got married and divorced really young. I know that you had an Adderall addiction. I know that you moved back in with your parents. You really were in a dark place. Yeah. Tell us this story, I guess. Like I I really want to know what this What was this rock bottom like for you? So I got married like 2011, I think, or 2012, something like that. But I had dated this guy all throughout college. I went to FSU. He was like my, the first guy I met. And yeah, I dated him all throughout college. And we were together, including like our six month marriage for six years. But he was abusive. He never hit me, but it was very emotionally abusive. Made me feel horrible about myself. And then- when we got married, I tried to break off the engagement, but he always like would talk me into it. He like tore me apart. I didn't have any Chelsea left. Like I wasn't the strong woman that you see today. Like I was very like weak. So we got married and then he was so mean and he was really rough with the dogs. I just, I remember thinking like, if I ever have a kid with him, like, I hope he doesn't like hurt him. Like he was just, he was really angry inside. My parents, I was like this, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. And my parents came up and my parents had seen all this unfold like over the years. Honestly, I owe so much to my parents because if they hadn't done this for me, because I was so weak then, I don't know what I would have. I honestly think I could have maybe have killed myself. Like I was in such a dark place and I had no self-worth for myself, like just totally been beaten down for years. They came up to Atlanta to visit me and he was like outside doing something. And my parents pulled me aside in the guest room. And they literally told me, they're like, Chelsea, we see what's happening. We see what's happening to you. We just like want to let you know, we give you permission to get a divorce. Like you can get a divorce. You can move back home. Like we'll help you. Like this is like, they saw like what was happening. I'm just so thankful that they did that because that literally all of that changed my life. Like I literally think I probably would have killed myself. It was such a dark time in my life. I pulled everything together. I left him and moved back in back home and started over and then started my life, got a career in mortgages, was really successful in mortgages and um, became the top producer in Florida for that, was making well into the six figures, met a guy along the way, dated him for a while. And we developed like a very like toxic, I guess, lifestyle together. I got diagnosed with ADHD. So they prescribed me Adderall for it and then started taking Adderall was killing it at the job again, like kind of linking this all back to like my self-worth. I tied all this success to the Adderall. I didn't think it was Chelsea because I still had all this like underlying stuff that I hadn't healed from and my self-worth. Yes, I believed in God and I was a Christian and everything, but I wasn't really like owning my truth and my power. I was just still mentally not totally strong. So yeah, so I associated all the success with Adderall and I just kept taking more Adderall and I kept making more money. And then eventually I had no life and was a hot mess express, developed an addiction. 
that was kind of another reset period in my life. I prayed to God. I asked him to, to give me an opportunity to where I could be successful at without taking a pill because I had never had success, financial success in my life without the Adderall. So again, I'm tying all my self-worth to an outside source, like a man, a pill, whatever. So then I checked myself into rehab for 10 days. And when I was at rehab, rehab was like, God gave me balls of steel in rehab. Like he broke me down. I was so humbled and he spoke to me and he gave me so much courage in rehab. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy is not, we're not going to get married. This is not going to happen. This is not a healthy relationship. I need to restart my life. I need to push the reset button. And this opportunity that I was approached with in my DMS, like this is, I really, this is God's telling me, like, I need to pursue this. So when I got back from rehab, I broke up with him, moved out of his house, moved in with my parents. Seriously, my parents deserve a like golden <laughs> in heaven for they have helped me time and time again. Like they are the most amazing supportive people in the world. And I owe everything to them and started from scratch, started this business. I quit my mortgage career because I associated that with Adderall. So I had like a nice safe space to start over. You went to your parents from the divorce. Then you moved in with that other guy. Then you moved back in with there was a there was a lot like in between that. Like I mean, I was I lived in Miami. I only lived with my parents for like a month or two. Like kind of like just to get my feet, whatever. Yeah. But it was I wasn't in a situation then. Like I still had a job, but I, I moved to Miami for a while. Then I moved to Orlando. So I was only with my parents for like a hot second for the divorce. When I got out of rehab, I was 28 at the time, moved in with them and started my business. Yeah. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had 700 followers on Instagram when I started. Like God spoke to me in rehab and I knew that this was like what he wanted me to do. So I just put my back up against the wall and I didn't give myself an option to fail. I was like, I'm going to make this happen. So, and that's what I did. And now Five years later in the business, I've made over $3 million with the company and commissions and it's changed my life. Wow. 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 Five years, three yeah. million, a rock, a son, a husband, yeah. a, <laughs> home, a, home, a homeowner, <laughs> a homeowner. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. But it's a lot. There's like, and I think like, that's so important to remember is like no one has things just handed to them. Like everyone has a story. Everyone has a journey. If you guys knew me five years ago, I wasn't the woman I am today. All of that, that crap that I went through, the hard journey I had to go through, it shaped me and made me appreciate what I have now. And it made made me also realize what I didn't want. I didn't want to feel like crap and be treated like crap. And you know, I'll have all these things. So they all, it all, everything's serving you in some capacity. If you have that, if you just change your perspective. Absolutely. Speaking of perspective, let's get into rewriting your story. And it really yeah. truly does give a perspective that not a lot of people, you know, see, I mean, everyone sees things from a different lens, but when I read this, I just was like, Yes, like chills, chill, chill. So it reads, here is your reminder that you can rewrite your story. Five years ago, my life was a complete wreck and so was I. I was emotionally, mentally, and spiritually a mess. There comes a point in your life where you can either accept your life and situation and choose to settle or you have faced enough pain that you reach a breaking point where you decide enough is enough and choose to rewrite your story. So I chose the latter. And so then you go on to share your top five tips for doing exactly that and creating a life that you are obsessed with, which I think is everything I just, everything that you just said and what I was just saying back to you about like how I was just like in shock over and over again, like, wow, I can't believe he did that. Wow, I can't believe that happened. Wow, I can't believe this happened is like, Yeah, this is exactly what it looks like when you shift your perspective into wanting that wow life, that life in awe of like, and it's not, it's not even about material things. It's not even about what you're able to do now versus what you weren't able to do then. It's about the happiness that comes with it, the freedom that comes with it, the peace that comes with it, because 
you can go through so much pain yeah. and even when you have a good job and money and and good parents to fall back on it's not it still doesn't bring you true happiness within and so then when you know what you really want and you're like i deserve this life that I'm obsessed with, and then you see it all happen, it happens greater than you even imagine. I'm sure you didn't imagine your life to go this way. Yeah, you thought you were going to overcome an obstacle, but you didn't imagine this. No, and I definitely are here. It's like, holy shit. Yeah, absolutely. I heard this saying, so I don't know who I saw it from, but so they're they're like, God, show me how good it can get. And that's kind of like what I'm I'm just all about that now. I'm like, okay, God. I know you've gotten me this far. Where are we going now? Show me how good it can get. Kind of like leading into how I recreated all of this, regardless of your belief or anything. But for me personally, it's been my faith in God. Like I owe everything that I've overcome, everything that I've had today to God, like a thousand percent. And this whole, like, especially over the last five years too, and especially as I became a mom, I have just dug down deep into my faith in Christianity and reading my Bible and praying and listening to praise and worship music and getting plugged into a good church and all that stuff. And and my life has really shifted and I've shifted. I was a certain person last year. I'm, I'm this today. And like, that's like, you want to constantly be going up. You don't want to stay the same because we're meant to evolve. We're meant to become better versions of ourselves. If you're not a better version than you were last year, like you've got work to do. We all always have work to do until we die. Let, let's get into these now. Share yeah. with us what your top top five tips were for. Yeah. Life. So the first one was WPP, which I got that from It's Emily. I love her. I just, I love how she abbreviated that. I'm like, oh yes. I'm like, that's so good. But the word Bible, prayer and praise. Um, and then the second one is personal development. Like that has been so huge for me. And I was very unaware of like personal development. I thought like it was just for people who, I don't know, had issues, but hello, we all have issues, you know? Um, and I don't, I don't have those kind of issues. I'm good. I, but I did. We all do, right? Some people who really helped me would be Manifestation Babe. Love her so much. She's helped me so much along my journey. Amanda Francis. She's so awesome. Ed Milet. Ed Milet's the man. Tony Robbins. If you guys can get to one of his live events, do it. It's so worth it. But yeah, and then obviously like Crystal, like I've hired Crystal. I've hired some people, but like it's all about whether it be courses, books, podcasts, whatever works for you and feeds you, like do that thing. And journaling, like journaling was really big for me too. And it, it is something that has helped me and can be a great tool when I need it. And then having a vision, it's, it's and even in the Bible, it's like without a vision, people perish. If you can't see like where you're going, be pushing for that. Like you're going absolutely nowhere. For me, even though I didn't like know I was going to become a millionaire and like be married to this amazing guy. Like when I started my business, all I wanted to do was I wanted to prove to myself that I could make a six figure income without taking Adderall. That's all I wanted mm -hmm. because that's all I believed was possible for me. And because I had never been quote unquote financially successful without taking Adderall, I wanted to prove to myself I could be successful just by being Chelsea. But as I got into this business and like was evolving and like all the things, you know, your vision expands as you expand your visions, your vision expands, like what you believe is possible for you. So having a vision, seeing bigger plans and dreaming big for yourself. Um, and then this is probably like, this is like one of the most important, but bathing it till you make it. And what I mean by that, it's not faking it till you make it. It's not like whatever, but it's like keeping the faith and holding the space and knowing that what you are calling for is coming into your life, regardless of what it looks like right now, regardless of like, if you're in a horrible relationship, if you're single, if you're broke, whatever, like holding the space and believing that the money's coming, the guy's coming, whatever, whatever it is that you're calling in is coming. But in the meantime of doing that, you're doing the work to prepare for that. Mm -hmm. So preparing for an answered prayer, acting as if keeping that faith. Wow. I love that. I, I mean, 
it goes without saying, but it, you know, God's timing, divine timing, whatever, yeah. whatever people believe. I mean, I always yeah. talk about divine timing. There is so many, so many ways to really be able to say, I trust, I, I can't control this. Like I can't, you can only control what you can control. And then timelines and paths and destiny and faith and all that it's out of your hands. Like you have to, whatever it is that you believe in. And in our case, you know, um, that is God's timing. That's it's everything. And I do think that it brings a sense of peace of mind that, you know, some people aren't as um, faithful or as religious or even as spiritual, but it's not to say that that's, bad. I don't think anyone is right or wrong. I think everyone has their way. But I do think that there's a different sense of peace of mind that comes when you have that faith. Because if you don't have that faith, and you are just waiting on something, you think that you are doing you're I'm doing something wrong. I, I made the wrong decision. I took the wrong path. And you put so much blame on yourself for why the money's not here, why the guy's not here, why the situation hasn't changed. And you're, it's a little bit more like anxiety ridden or induced and, and more like you think that you can control situations. And I always say like, you really can't make the wrong decision. You really can't do the wrong thing when it comes to the story of your life. Like even getting out of a relationship that you thought was going to be marriage. You can't sit here and say, I could have been married by now, but I ended that relationship. No, you wouldn't have been because it wouldn't have worked out no matter what. Even if you didn't make that decision, you would have got divorced. Something would have happened. You wouldn't have been together. So I do think that there's that peace of mind when you do have that like faith until you make it, make it, faith until you make it mindset is like, I always know there's, there's something bigger coming. Something is going to change you when you just put that faith in his hands. It's like truly peace of mind, even if you don't understand why, or even if you're not fully happy, even if you're like, I don't want to be single. I want my person, or I don't want to be financially struggling or maybe living with my parents. I want my house and I want whatever it might be like, yes, there's versions and there's ways that it's like, yeah, we control those things. But only to a degree, we are not in control of what's like happening when it comes to our timeline, our destiny. It really isn't. And I think like that's another really important thing to remember is like, we do our part. I really like opened it. It opened my eyes to like the world of like manifestation and stuff. And I, and I believe some of it and like, you know, and then there's like biblical things too, but you know, you can't just sit on your butt and wish for something to happen. You have to take the action too. You have to do your part so that God can do his part. That's what I think is so cool is like, you know, you do what you got to do, but then he does what he's got to do. And it's like, it's like a co-creation thing. You're not in this alone. You're not doing this alone. It isn't all on you. It's you and God or whatever you believe in. It really takes, it takes it off of yourself and it gives you permission to create and to choose and, and to take that action and to follow your heart because Another thing I really do believe is the desires in your heart, as long as they're good, like nothing illegal or anything like that, we're putting you for a reason and they're your, they're part of your purpose. They're part of your destiny. And you have to go out and take that scary action, whatever, to bring it to fruition. And then God does his part. Yeah. To wrap this up, I was originally planning on asking you a question about motherhood, but I, I kind of want to save that for another day because a different question came to my mind that I feel is more relevant to this conversation that we had. And it came yeah. to my mind a bunch of times because you, you did go through hard relationships. You did go through long periods of time of like low self-esteem or low self-love. And I I am curious because I find it to be relevant to this conversation. And I know that the girls who are listening will have this internal question. Did you, when you met David, after going through what you went through, could you truly say that from the moment you met, it was almost like a light switch, like, this is my guy I'm going to marry? Or did you ever have feelings of like, let me be conscious that I don't tap into my toxic behaviors. Let me make sure that I'm like, you know, not falling into bad habits of like insecurity or things like that. Or could you honestly say like, as soon as we met, like we, that was it. This was my guy. To the Bible. It was my guy. 
Like I just, it was this internal knowing. And it's, there's really no other way to describe it. I mean, and he had it too. It wasn't just me. It was like, it was God. There's no way around it. It was just this no, very, like, moment of insecurity. It was like you, you felt safe and secure. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And of course though, like, you know, we're human, like along the way, like before, before he moved out to Scottsdale, I was like, um, am I like crazy? Like whatever. But like, I just trusted that he was my guy. We were just going, we were doing it. And now, you know, here we are three years later. Yeah. Baby. It's so great. I mean, I'm listening to when you were saying the story and you're like, as soon as I saw him, of course, yeah. I think that some people go through moments of like, wanting that to be their person but when they go through so much trauma there yeah. are like struggles or insecurities that arise that m- make you maybe doubtful or yeah like feel like I don't want to do the things that I was always doing with my past I, it seems like it's just simply when you know you know and you're not going to feel those that that doubt. but I I think working with Crystal for whatever those six months or whatever it was. And all of the other personal development I had done for the years leading up to that helped me heal. So it wasn't like I had not done the inner work. Crystal helped me finalize all of that other stuff that was lingering inside of me. I mean, like on some of our sessions, like I would be sobbing. She helped me heal a lot of stuff too. And um, so, yeah, it's like, it was doing that inner work that allowed me to be ready for David when I met him and then me to know like without a shot of a doubt like this was my person right so it's almost like that's exactly why you were ignoring him for the years and you were just oh, for the years yeah. because it was meant to be that you weren't meant to meet him until you were healed yeah. maybe you would have gotten out of that five-year or relationship or whatever however long relationship that you said and then met David you know a week later and you would have been that more toxic version of yourself because you didn't have the conscious mindset like I don't think I would have been I would not have been ready for David and he wouldn't have been ready for me and marriage is not easy either yeah. it's commitment it takes marriage is work it is so it's like you know when you're when you're going out you're like okay like I'm ready for marriage it's not some cakewalk yeah you know marriage is personal development it's constant personal development in itself so I think all of that really prepared us for this and like going through becoming parents, all of that stuff. And now we're working together as he's helping me with Monet. So it's like, there's a lot of challenges that come up in marriage that if you you haven't healed your stuff prior to meeting your person, it's going to bleed into your marriage and cause issues. You need, I think the, the work, the advice for everyone listening is heal yourself, Mm -hmm. do your inner work, before you start looking for your person or whatever, because it's just going to create more issues. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. So like I said, we might have to do a part two to get into I'm here for it. Let's do part two. Because I had questions, but I'm like, I want the We're just on such a good roll here. So we'll leave it on that note. So tell us where everyone can connect with you and find you online. Yeah. So you guys can find me on Instagram at LFG Bay. That's the best way to find me amazing thank you so much chelsea yes thanks Beck. okay girls we all know how important self-care is but i always say the first and most important step to taking care of yourself is investing in yourself we all want to show up as the highest version of ourselves but we don't always have the proper tools and guidance to do so That's why I offer one-on-one confidence coaching. In as little as 8 or 12 weeks, I help women go from settling to believing they can have it all. My mentorship is for women who want to raise the bar. So I provide the tools to strengthen your mindset, improve your self-awareness and self-esteem, and live consciously. I've helped all of my clients trust in themselves, embody confidence through every challenge, and genuinely believe the life of their dreams is possible so they start acting like it. If you're ready to commit to life-changing growth and start showing up as the 2.0 version of you, then my coaching program is for you. So inquire by filling out the form in the show notes, and if your submission is approved, I will reach out to offer an intro call to discuss the program in detail, the pricing, and see how I can best serve you. From then, You can expect weekly 60-minute private Zoom calls, affirmations and homework for your needs and goals, 
weekly or bi-weekly accountability check-ins, unlimited messenger support from me during office hours, and more. My clients' testimonials share that they've seen improvement in themselves from as early as their first session. All you need is to be willing and able to invest in yourself spiritually, financially, and mentally to become that best version of you. So again, check out the show notes for the link or even the link in my social media bios to inquire about one-on-one coaching with me. Now let's get into the episode. <laughs> 